Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Good, good. Uh, before I get started, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the, the tra traditional owners on the land we're meeting today, so the Turuba people and the Yagara people. Uh, pay my respects to the elders, past and present, past, present and future, and thank them for this opportunity to speak. Um, so, uh, where do I start? So, my name's Jack. Um, introducing myself, proud Torres Strait Islander man. So, I'm part of a, a minority statistic for this country. Uh, many stats that I can get into, but what I want to talk today, talk to you today about is Indigenous Business Australia. Does I, I'm making an assumption, so I'm hoping that everyone here, or not everyone here, knows who IBA is. Yep. No. No. Okay. So, um, a bit of a bit of the the, the bureaucracy part, or the, or the government part here, is we're we're an organisation legislated under the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Act to generate um, impacts, social and economic impacts for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. So. We, we do our best. Um, we're within a, a mechanism under the federal government. Um, but there are many vehicles in our company that we aim to achieve impacts, is the word I'll use, but outcomes um, for First Nation Australians. So our vision is to generate economic wealth. Um, and the vehicles we have are through home loans and home, home ownership, which um, what, what, a, what a home provides is a safe and secure place um, for people to live in. The second vehicle is business. Now, business is, is a little more complex, and that's where my profession sits. Um, but what business generates is income and wealth. And, and it's hard work, but as you generate that income and wealth, um, it goes on to other impacts. The third mode of vehicle within IBA is investments, and that's your larger scale businesses. It's, it's investments. I, I don't think that's, uh, I, I don't want to spend too much time talking about that one. What I would like to focus on is more, more the business and the wealth generation and home, home security. Um, I'm just, I, 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 was, I was sitting here observing and, and watching everyone speak and I was, I was unsure on how to, to take this discussion or, or, or how to um, talk about what I do uh, because because it's, it's more than just being a, a, a team leader. So in, within IBA, I'm slapped with a, with a label, a title, team leader, I get it. But what I'm trying to do is create impact for a minority group, which I'm also part of in Australia. Um, standing here, I am likely to live 10 years less, less than my non-Indigenous brothers and sisters. Um, there are some other statistics I won't get into because I don't want to focus on, on, on that. I want to focus on the positives and what we're trying to do here and drive this change, um, intergenerational change, because that's where, it, where it, that's where it started and that's where I believe that we, can, we, we need to pick it up again and, and change, change you know, the next generation. So some people may say, what's happening now doesn't seem like it's, it's making a difference, but um, it's like building a wall, isn't it? It's one, one brick at a time, and you lay that brick as perfect as possible to build the, the strongest wall you can. So that's an analogy of things take time. We're doing the best we can within a, a government system. Um, there are, so IBA, the, the term government, uh, <laughs> for me, it's difficult to say because I, I heard some issues from the three um, speakers up here and and there's 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 breaking down barriers how do we do that uh, there's there's other other issues um, but what I, what I, what I'd like to say is there are good people that are trying to make change in within the system or within the the boundaries that they are given uh, it's sometimes it may not look like it but I can guarantee that people are there for the right reason uh, that, that's that's all I wanted to say on that one. Um, we we had an initiative last week, which was the first of the so first of the kind. So IBA is creating statistics, new new statistics in in Australia. So uh, we we've, we've run a, a conference where it was just Indigenous women in business. 
Uh, nothing like that had been run. run. Uh, so statistics and that. Last, last week we had a youth forum where we invited 50 candidates, youth candidates, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander youth, because, uh, well, well, sorry, first of all, we got them together in, in, in one location and the, the whole purpose of that forum was to run pack the forever cha changing landscape of business, government, a whole range of other factors. Um, because I can guarantee in 10 years time, if we had everybody in this room sitting together, we would have, we would slightly, well, it will be different. We probably had five prime ministers in that same time as well. So uh, um, everything will have changed, new, new, new parliament, things like that. So trying to be proactive in, re in, in identifying and recognising these things rather than reactive and working you know, once something's that the whole once something has already happened, so you know, closing the gate after the horse has bolted is is the term I use. Um, I guess I, I've only got fifteen minutes, so it'll be a short presentation from me. I I only touched a little bit on on Indigenous Business Australia and, and what we do. Is there? I guess I just I want to put a to you, is, are there any questions? Because um, I, I don't want to get into too much detail because you can, get re you can really get lost in the information and detail of what we do. But I'm, I'm happy to take questions. Does anybody have, have questions? And, and I'm hoping once I take those questions, it'll lead the conversation and we'll go on to another question and another question. Was I allowed to ask? Yeah. Am I allowed to be asked questions? Want, Jack. <laughs> Does anyone so, have any questions? Can I, can I just say, yeah. as a worker in the industry, yep. um, I've never heard of you. Um, I, I heard of you guys actually through um, a friend. I've, I've got a large Indigenous um, family that I've been part of for yep. 30 years, my best friend. Um, and we were sitting around having a yarn after a funeral the other week and she, she brought up that she got herself a home loan through you guys. And as a worker in the industry, I've never heard of you. So what... Um, why is that, do you think? How, how you guys promote yourselves? Um, why, why we can't have this amazing organisation that's given such great opportunities and no-one know about it? Yeah, that's, that's great feedback because we're trying to market ourselves better and get out into communities. Um, I, I don't have a direct answer, but... <coughs> again, please, this is, this is... I'm taking my IBA hat off here and this is me. Okay, you're seeing me as who, who I am, and I'll answer that question. Uh, it's the people, I think, within the organisation. So understanding that Aboriginal, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people um, do, not, do not, I guess, per se, fit this... Uh, oh, sorry, are this square peg fitting in a square hole? We do business differently, uh, education differently, so, you know, the, the square peg for education is sit in a classroom and learn with physical people. When I say physical, like, like we, we like to move and, and do things. Not everyone, but that's, that's my take on it. Uh, I think the marketing, we're better at it now. We're, we're much better at it. Uh, I, I would guarantee five years ago, if we tried to run a youth forum, it would have been very difficult to get, to get that out and, and get community engaged. So we're, we're becoming better at engaging in communities um, from five years ago. Uh, we rely on word of mouth, a lot of word of mouth. Um, the Murray Vine, <laughs> it's faster than text message and telephone. So um, when, when, we, when we put the, the idea, sorry, or the strategy behind getting information out there is, is to rely a, a lot on word of mouth as well in community. Um, I'd like to answer that as well. I think it's incumbent on, on organisations like us as well. Um, so, yeah. you know, um, I intentionally approached um, IBA and I intentionally wanted to um, talk about the what they're offering um, that young people... Like, you know, I was talking to Derek earlier and he went to the Young the Futures Forum. He you know, it's just so exciting. So if there's young people that you're working... What I want... Why I, um, 
asked Jack and, and, and his mob to come because it was about saying, if you have young people that you think <coughs> might want to start a small business, um, there's yeah. this crew here. So I think it's a little bit incumbent on us as well to stand up and, and, and do some of that marketing and, and not just place it on... Um, I mean, I think we're totally supportive of self-determination, but we also need to be saying, hey, here's this mob, this is our job. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. That's good. We have time for one more. Oh. Um, Kirsten Cooper from Youth Advocacy Centre. So I work with a bill and order support service. So I work with uh, young people who are on bail and orders and a lot of them remanded in custody. And we all know that young Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are overrepresented in custody. Mm. Um, just about pathways in for those young people that don't just have the barrier of um, homelessness but also have the barrier of being part of the legal system and, and pathways in to getting support from like, organisations like yourself. So, so, sorry. So just uh, just to help me clarify. So, sorry, what what are the are there? No, 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 not at all. Are the what are the pathways? Yes. yes. Get our, our young people involved. Because um, we have we work with it. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd love to after this, and I'll be sticking around for lunch. Have a chat to you. Um, there's certainly pathways. We we approach each each person as an individual, as as who they are. There may be history, but you know, let's let's just discuss person to person, and we'll see that that's all. It's it's about it's about building trust and and rapport. So I, I should explain. I have a team. My my patch goes from the top of Queensland in the Cape York down to Tasmania. So it's a big patch, and I'm and I have a, a team under me who I I'm trying to 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 teach them because it's about education, and not everyone in my team is Indigenous and. And so I'm teaching them to be respectful and to be able to engage. And that's, that's, that's how I w would approach that. But there's certainly pathways, and, and I'd love to have a chat. Thank you very much, lunch, Jack. Yeah. Jack Reese, everyone. Give Thanks, guys. You're welcome.